The Blokebusters Podcast is proud to be a member of the Pod Bros Network. You can find us, as well as other fantastic podcasts, such as Pencil and Ink Review, Another Damn Trivia Show, and The Language of Bromance at podbros.com, as well as on most other fine podcasting services. Now sit back, relax, and prepare to share and enjoy the Blokebusters Podcast. Welcome to another episode of French Fried, the series where we try and prove a point that maybe 10 sequels is a bit too much in today's society. Let's just cut it off at three and uh, deal with it from there. So, I'm Paul. I'm Brian. And today we also have joining us... Um, hi, I'm back. <laughs> you know that voice, much, people. Much like these unwanted sequels, I am. I, so it's, I no, guess, no. It, I guess you're it's actually like, welcome. So well, thank you, yes. but I guess it's kind of appropriate that I'm appearing on French Fries since I just keep like coming back, even if I'm not asking. Um, but uh, and I'm Kelleen, back again. Honorary yes. Blockbuster Kelleen is back for I think her fifth appearance here. Hey, for program, hey, right? Yeah. Final Station Five. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm officially. Do I get my smoking jacket? So. Since I'm in the yeah, timer club. It's in the mail, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's Amazon We're finalizing Prime. the design. Amazon Prime it mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, yeah, it's going to look like the Pied Piper jacket. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'll get I'll get my cheesy bomber jacket in yes. today. <laughs> All right. Well, today, in case you haven't figured it out by the name of this episode, we are covering Final Destination 5, which is something that you guys voted on. And Brian yeah, was uh, very you happy. Guys, thanks, assholes. You guys meaning not us. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I yes. voted in that Twitter poll, and I did not, not knowing that I would actually be doing this episode. And I have. Yes. You, know, you know what happened, Paul? I voted, and I tried to hit Mission Impossible, but my fat finger hit Bond, so I essentially voted for Gary Johnson in this uh, <laughs> poll, which you really pisses me off. Stein. I know. You're such a Susan Sarandon. <laughs> yeah, it really upset you're me. You're like, a comic. Damn it! You are a comic. Not that that one yeah, vote now would have made up the difference, but yeah, because I think it would have taken three or four yeah. more votes to get Mission Impossible in the lead. Yeah, but. it would have been two votes to tie, and then we would have flipped a coin, so it still would have been 50 50. So, well, you know. but it's kind of interesting because we did kind of get a Tom Cruise in a way. Yeah, I yeah. kind of yes. I was not looking forward to this watch, and now yeah. But well, yeah, we can get there. Yeah, there's, but, a, lot to, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Yes, and uh, one other little thing we've decided just to well, you know, save on time really is that from now on when we do one of these polls and get you guys to vote, we're going to do the winner first, and then the number two after that at some point. So we are effectively getting two films for the price of one free Twitter poll. So there you go. So you will get to listen to Mission Impossible at some point. So this is like a Groupon <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> this is a Groupon a podcast. But brought to you by Groupon. It's yeah. like, aren't you so glad? Let's you go to the ad there? read. Uh, <laughs> Groupon copy. I don't. Uh, not yes. yet sponsored by. Not yet sponsored by Groupon. But yes. You owe us money, Groupon. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm sure they'll hear this and give us a literal <laughs> two cents. <laughs> hey, they, hey, they have Chris Brown CDs on their site. Okay, I think they'd be open to it. True. And on that note, uh, <laughs> so uh, get into the nitty gritty in just a second. But first, follow us on Twitter at blokebusters, facebook.com slash blokebusters, or on Instagram at blokebusters. You can email us blokebusterpodcast at gmail.com, and we have the website blokebusters.webs.com, which, yeah, just go to it. I don't even know if it's up to date at this point. And yeah. I think you got that down to about eight seconds, Paul. I That's know. I, I, That's, I, yeah. The micro machine guy has nothing on you. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen it. There's a video of a guy who does the entire to be or not to be speech in 27 seconds. I'm going to try and beat that one day. Uh, Molly. Yeah. (laughs) And they recorded it and then slowed it down to make sure that he said every single word. And he did. So I don't know. Because I know exactly how long that is because I was just telling a story about that the other day. But yeah, Uh (laughs) I took a little longer than that. But uh, when I did it in school, but yeah. 
Yeah, well, Story for a different time. Well, let's. Uh, yeah. Like, maybe one day we should just record you doing that and just release it. Just again, no context. Sure, I'm you happy. should try to do the entire Hamilton soundtrack mm-hmm. and, and like I, in like twenty. And like I also know the Gettysburg minutes. Address, like, so yeah. I can yeah, I can do both of them. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just extra mindfuck. Why not just have you do one sentence from one, one sentence from the other, and just alternate all the way through? Let's see, yeah. see how that comes out. <laughs> I think it'll break my brain more than a confusing time travel. Thank you. So, yes, this film directed by Stephen Quayle. And yeah. you're Stephen Quayle, I hear you ask. Well, that's a good question. Yeah. He directed Into the Storm. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, second unit on Avatar and Titanic. Yep. He yep. also did a documentary in 2005. So yeah, that 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 this guy. Interesting. Um. Yeah, the, like this guy. Like, uh, and actually, I now that you mentioned he did directed Into the Storm, I noticed by like some like IMDb like deep dives with the cast, uh, a few of the cast members of this movie were actually in Into the Storm as well. So apparently, mm-hmm. like one good thing you could say about this movie is that everybody gets along. So, That's true. Yeah. I think, yeah. By ever, by and the video that they we did not reference. waste yeah. any of the budget on the opening credits. That's for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but yeah, the budget for this one was forty million dollars. What? It, yep. And it made a hundred and fifty-seven million eight hundred eighty-seven thousand six hundred and forty-three dollars. This well, might this, be the biggest hit we've done. This movie, sure. this movie was also obviously, obviously made for 3D. Yes. Like, to the point where it was distracting to watch it in, like, regular... Yeah. Like, it's like not 3D. Yes, yeah, like, I think, HD, HD or SD. I yeah, think the there were, were... so intended for 3D, yeah. yeah. I think there were about five points in the film where it was very clear that it was like, oh, well, that's the 3D part. Oh, there's the next 3D part. And yeah, it was definitely the opening was that. Actually, I no, I said um, during we'll get to that, but during the first major action sequence, I was like, was this movie in three D? Because it really seems like all of these were intended for three D. And I looked it up, and I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Were any of the others in 3D? I, I, um, I don't know, but I mean, the thing I is, I don't believe so. You no, know they're going to do. I'm surprised they've waited so long to do another one. Well, uh, I did kind of look into that, uh, and they they said they were going to if it was a success, and it, they were going to do two more back to back. And as of yet, as far as I can tell, they haven't even started pre-production. So I think <laughs> they had the idea and then were like, uh, what now? <laughs> but, the, but that's the thing. They're still pushing ahead with the Universal Monster Universe. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. even after, like, I'm sorry, like, compared yeah. to budget. Screw the Dark Universe. Like, <laughs> the Dark yeah. Universe, like, I mean, it was, it was a fucking flop. <laughs> like, just bring it straight to VOD in the States and release it overseas. Well, like, he, don't, don't, don't clog up the box office with your trash. Well, the first four films were released by New Line Cinema. This one was Warner Brothers. So I don't know if that has oh, something to do with you it. Know they had, yeah, yeah, you know they have great decisions, except <laughs> recently. Like, like, I'm sorry, like, uh... What, like the, they just had their first hit, and I don't know how long. <laughs> yeah, I uh, again, we'll probably get into it. We need to kind of pick a starting point because we've come up with a whole bunch of different things. And I uh, wish I'd saved it. Damn it! I was looking it up last night, and someone on Wikipedia had put down for the the future of it. They don't know if they're going to make another one, but if they do, it'll involve a boat. Like it was, it was a perfect example of anyone can edit Wikipedia. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, but okay. but here's the thing: we'll get to it. The ending, like, does there's it, something to explore with this ending. Does not add up. And that well, is... <laughs> like, no, this ending needs yeah. to be explained. Yeah, needs to be uh, explained. And... All right, well, uh, I'm just going to rattle through the cast list and then we can just get into it. So, the main character, Sam Lawton, played by Nicholas D'Agosto, D'Agosto, mm-hmm. however the hell you want to pronounce his last name. Uh, Molly Harper was played by Emma Bell. Peter Friedkin, played by Miles Fisher, definitely more on him later. 
Candice Hooper was played by Ellen Rowe. I'm assuming it's how you pronounce her last name. W-R-O-E. So I'm going to go with Rowe. Uh, it could be Rowe. Could Sorry, be. I, w- I, w- no, I went to high school with a bunch of Rows. No, that's, that's fine. I have no idea how you're supposed to say that one. Um, Olivia Castle was played by the incredibly long name Jacqueline McKinnis Wood. No hyphen there, just three long McKinnis Wood. Yeah, and uh, Isaac Palmer was played by P.J. Byne. Again, B Y N E. Lots of weird names in this one. What? I uh, have burn on IMDb, but burn. and I maybe I'm reading my writer. I don't know. It just, and yeah, and then the last you. one I had written down uh, was Dennis uh, Latman, played by David. And how Kechner. do you say? Thank Kechner. you. <laughs> and <laughs> another as one an, I, I know. As, yeah. as an yeah. SNL, because yeah. uh, with David Kuchner. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that'll be why uh, I don't. I would have. Add, a couple. Nathan, who's yeah, by, um, yeah I, I, I neglected to write him down. Yes, played by um, Aaron es- Escapita. Es- uh, what? I, again, I'm not the person to be reading these names off, but that's my job every week. So. I have, yeah, okay. He was on. Uh, yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. But Arlen Escapita. Mm. Es- Escarpeta. Escarpeta. <laughs> Well, no, I remember him. There was a series back in the early 2000s called American Dream. It was on um, it was on NBC, and it was about a family in Philadelphia in the early 60s. And it was supposed to be like an allegory for what like America was going through because she was on um, Amer- like she had gotten chosen to be a, mar- a dancer on American Bandstand, and he was on that. So that's why I like I was like, where do I know him from? And then I looked, <laughs> and then I looked, and I was like, oh, he's our age. Okay. And then he was also in, I believe it was the uh, the reboot of Friday the Thirteenth. Yes, he was, and he was also in that um, Into the Storm movie, I think. Uh, mm. Probably. <laughs> Star Trek um, Darkness? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Star Trek Into Darkness, uh, according to Wikipedia, as voice. I rewatched voice. that the other day. I, I, I the loved way, voice in that by movie. The way, I know. <laughs> by the way, throw back to our uh, episode last year of uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. Yeah. Hey guys, check it out if you want to. Um, <laughs> it's free on Hulu. It's and beyond, the episode is oh, always man. free on uh, any <laughs> podcast platform. Um, but I rewatched the movie the other day and I, I'm like, oh, no, wait, Into Darkness or Beyond? Oh, never mind. Never mind. I was thinking of <laughs> Beyond. But um, no, Star Trek Beyond is actually. Uh, I have so many more thoughts on that now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, maybe we need to become a uh, parody of ourselves and just keep redoing the same podcast. <laughs> That'll be our French We're ride. In a time uh, loop. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. I also did throw out uh, Courtney B. Vance and Tony Todd. Oh yeah, quick. you can't forget like bearing the lead with that Courtney B. Vance. Yeah, that Which, Courtney B. Like, Vance role. Check, who, a check's a check. Yeah, good for him getting that paycheck. But yeah, <laughs> I like my theory is with Courtney B. Vance that he was on set for one day. <laughs> Probably like at him. most two. Like but. all of his scenes were shot in one day. And good for him. Yep. Yeah, does he, I? I wasn't paying any attention. Is his wardrobe any different in any of the scenes he's in? Oh, I don't uh, think it I would. mean, he might have added a jacket at the <laughs> at the end. Yeah. Well, no, he might have like taken his taken jacket, a jacket off, off. Yeah. and yeah. put it back on. Yeah. But... <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I, that, that was the most like, what the fuck moment for me. Like, what? I had no motivated idea. Motivated yeah. him. Like, his career has never been hurting at all. Like, <laughs> was he, he? I feel like he was friends with somebody involved in this movie. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Or he just wanted to do something, but just to have fun. And I don't know. Just like, like you said, it probably just a couple like, days what, anyway. Like what? Okay, I want to take a vacation to Oregon and film yeah. something. I don't know. This works out. Like, yeah, something had to do with like scheduling uh, and maybe I don't know. Was, like, yeah, I'll do it. Maybe he but, just really enjoyed the series and was like, hey, I'll yeah. Do it. Yeah, yeah. his acting caliber is definitely way, 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 way above <laughs> <laughs> um, doing this, but yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so, does anyone have a specific starting point with this? Uh, well, I always like to, on these French ride, kind of go over with each of us kind of what your history is with the series or the, fr- uh, the franchise. Um, yeah. I myself have, I think, only seen one and a half Final Destinations before this one. one. I saw okay. the first Other one, and I saw one. part of two. 
I saw I, the first one. Yeah, and and, and I, I've one. I've seen the first one, the second one. I think part of the third one, maybe, and then this one. So I, I do love that this. I mean, Paul, you pointed it out at least to me uh, that this follows the one that's titled The Final Destination. Yes. <laughs> so they're like, this is the last one. So why didn't they nope. call this, yeah, why didn't they call this uh, Final Destination, JK? JK, yeah. <laughs> JK, all. Main, I think mainly because uh, they couldn't call it for obvious reasons and spoilers at this point, Final Destination 0.5, which it really should have been called. So, yeah. so yes, I didn't think too much of the series, like overall. When it was out, I mean, the first one was a really cool idea. And then the second one was more of the exact same idea. And then the yeah. third one was exactly the same. And I assumed the fourth one was going to be exactly the same again. None, so. of, these, none, of, none of the movies, and I get it because you want to keep continuing the franchise and money, but they never answer the existential questions involved. Yeah, like who's behind the like, or why is or morality what is not like consider, it's it, basically it's like it's like saying yes there is a higher power but he's a total dick. <laughs> yeah, I, like even Fight Club, Fight Club had rules. I need the rules of Final Destination. Yeah, yeah. I have a bit of a like a, a a fan theory about who's actually behind the whole thing. And really, yeah i I think that it's actually William Bloodworth that is death. And I think he's behind everything because he's always there. And he explains the rules to most of oh, He's not in the fourth yeah. one. Candy yeah. Man. Oh, oh, no one say it another time. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Hey, hey, Willy Wonka. No, <laughs> yeah, yep, I'm saying Whatever that. happens after that, after that is not on me. <laughs> oh, don't be that guy. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think he is death and he is just kind of toying around with them. Yeah, and you know what? I would love to see that character explored. Like a spin off about that character. Like, yeah, creepy, what's his creepy deal? Candyman Corner. Yeah. What's his mm-hmm. deal? Like, yeah. the, whole, the whole time I was like, I want to know his story. Like, that's more interesting to me. <laughs> yeah, and it, when it comes to the rules in this universe, it. It really does kind of come out of nowhere because you let's say that there is death has a plan for everyone. If one dies at a set point, so on and so forth. What lets someone cheat that? Obviously, it's a premonition, but where does it come from? The, exactly. exactly. No, and I said, yeah. I said, why is death mad at the humans who cheated death instead of whoever provided yeah. the premonition? You got to find the Snowden in this situation. It's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Who's leaking? You got to who's the leaker? Who's the leaker? Who's I, the leaker? I I feel like maybe death has a list yeah. and he's OCD, so when he doesn't get to cross <laughs> it off. Mm-hmm. He, he has to then go back after them in order just to get them down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, am absolutely. I the only one that's picturing Adam Carolla from Family Guy death? That's the only death. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, my God, that, that was like the pilot of Family Guy, yeah. I think. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I, whenever I think of death, I think of the Terry Pratchett Discworld death, but that death would be would not care. Like he, well, He'd be annoyed, I, and then he'd let it go. Well, I think of... Uh, yeah, the Bill and Ted's uh, Bogus Journey. Yes, absolutely. Of mm-hmm. uh, yes, they melvin him. And so... And I Halloween costume two years ago. And you find out that like, he <laughs> hates his job and he just needs somebody to show him like there's like a better side to like, existence. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, the whole thing, I was kind of following... When they were they were going through it, say like, okay, so these are the rules, and so on and so forth, blah blah. But and we are going to have to jump right to the end here for this one. Good time. Um, yes, uh, I and I even did a little bit of reading up just to kind of see if anyone else had picked up on it. So Molly shouldn't have died, in my opinion. Okay, okay, okay. Molly. Oh, are you talking about how there's still like an extra death? Yeah, there's a yeah. death on the table um, before things are squared. They got it. They have a plus up. I mean, did mm-hmm. you ever play video games? Like, <laughs> like, like they have yeah. a one up. Okay, like, yeah. yeah. Well, that, well, that's the thing. Like, I I looked into it. So obviously, can't at the end of the film again. <laughs> no, we're just going to jump straight there. So Peter tries to kill Molly to take her 
life force which takes mm-hmm. you off the list, whatever. So he ends up killing the policeman. And then he goes to kill Molly, which Sam stops. Now, what I read, I tried to explain it away, saying that that was... Molly was then supposed to die, but then that stopped that. But if we're following the rules of the universe... No, Molly wasn't supposed to die because if everyone had died, then no one would be pointing a gun at her in the kitchen. So unless Death decided, okay, she's just going to die now and I'm changing the rules myself, then it doesn't make any sense, which means... No. Pray I don't change them again. (laughs) I know. (laughs) And And then right at the end, she wouldn't have ever been on the plane. Exactly. So, or, or, death of the vindictive um, Nathan, bastard. Either that or Nathan, like, like, and I, I said, I was like, okay, so do you have to, like, does it have to be you who kills the person to save your own life? Or do those lives transfer over to other mm-hmm. people? Again, what are the terms and conditions? Exactly. And like, like um, we had like the one guy was going to die anyway in a few days. So like, does it matter how long they were going to live afterwards? Does that still count? Does it count that they were like, a really good person know? or a really shitty person? Yeah, it, uh, it seemed to me that the idea is, so you specifically kill someone. Now their lifespan becomes yours. So whenever they would have died, that's when you're going to die. And it like looking through it, Peter kills the policeman, and then Sam kills Peter. So, direct line there. Sam would have got the policeman's life through Peter. But, I, I mean, I was kind of There's surprised they didn't. There is an extra life. There is, yeah. because Peter was going to die anyway. He died in the vision. Yeah, this is so that an doesn't extra count life. as well. Yeah, there's an extra life. Yeah, it, well, but that's the thing. At the, at the end of the film, Molly was never going to die, and then Sam takes the life that Peter took, which means that everything should be square. And then, of course, we have the ending, which... No, I think they're up one life. Though. Yeah, I still think they're up one. Okay, like, okay no, it, no, one? Dude, it was, no, dude, it was like... It, uh, like We were going through this like it was like Clue. Like, yeah. one, plus, <laughs> one plus two plus three plus yeah. one, one plus two plus three. Murder <laughs> board. Murder um, board. Um, <laughs> we had the murder but, board. Yeah. But, okay, um... Okay, uh, who, so, where, so where Nathan, do you think so he has Nathan, the life? Okay, so Nathan took, like, okay, um, let's see here. Uh, Tom, baby Tom Cruise mm-hmm. took, um, shot Courtney B. Vance, mm-hmm. um, and so, but, the, but then he died. Yes. So, that means that life is left over. What? No, because... <laughs> Courtney B. Vance's life is... Yeah, Courtney B. Vance's life goes into Peter. Sam is still due to die. So when Sam kills yeah, but, Peter, but Peter, then that life moves to him. That's his life. So, but then they both died. Exactly. That's my point. The so fact that they they, have, both so of them shouldn't a, have died. So exactly. There's a leftover life. That's why I'm saying there's a leftover life. Well, two then. Because both of them shouldn't have died based on the rules of the universe. So two extra deaths occur at the yeah, end. Four plus two plus one plus one. Yeah. I mean, again, it's like the end of Clue. Yeah. <laughs> and figuring out how many bullets are left. Uh, I don't know about that. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so, well, since we keep talking about the end, but we haven't specifically mentioned the exact ending, so what did you guys think of the end of this film? <laughs> I am like, what in the Donnie Darko fuck is this? Yeah, the the, the tip top very end. I was like, eh, fuck off no, <laughs> a little bit. But I, because re- okay, uh, actually, we need to tie this back to the beginning. So these guys are all like, like it's supposed to be like a really like lame millennial depressing version of The Office. <laughs> and they all work at some sales and like they don't really like describe like what specifically they do but they're all at some sales company and um murder board nicholas mm-hmm. d'agusto main character <laughs> sam we, we're gonna call him murder board, murder board I, yes. I, like, I, uh, I kept looking at him just going he looks like alex browning's younger brother like, cause he, he looks almost identical to him to me anyway that's what i took from it but he is like a chef but he like this is his day job, I guess. Uh, and, yes. And they work in some like I, I, don't, I don't I don't know if they yeah. work in like Portland or what like some Pacific Northwest looking place. Um, <laughs> but uh, they're going on an office retreat on like a charter bus. Yeah. And he and you see everybody die in a gruesome way, and it turns out it's a vision, and he's like everybody get off the bus. 
<laughs> then I I remembered. I was like, oh shit! So this is supposed to be like on the plane. Yeah. Yeah. In the first one. Yeah, and well, you having only seen the first film, you wouldn't have known that this is how every single one of them begins. Right. Yeah. But but it turned out like I, I called the loop. Oh, the time yeah, loop, you nailed that. Yeah. Because I hadn't seen any of the other ones. So I, I was like, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? They're on a time loop. Like, <laughs> like, because when he was on and then there were people freaking out on the plane, I was like, no. I was like, oh, my God, have, this is have, just like the first movie. And then I was like, those dudes look super dated. And then I was like, can I rewind that? I was like, dude, that's Devin Sawa. <laughs> have now have either of you watched the the movie Triangle? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that, it's as I'm well established that I'm like kind of not big on the horror genre, but um, that I thought was a really interesting take. And it, uh, sorry for anyone out there, spoiler alert for Triangle: it is a time loop situation or like uh, in the Bermuda Triangle. Or um, but it's re- I thought Hall really Jake really Jake kind Hall. of a clever yeah. idea. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I would recommend Triangle for yeah, anyone that has a Triangle it. or Source Code or Donnie Darko because yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal mm-hmm. loves him some time loops. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, that's that's the interesting thing. So you guys like they see somebody getting into like they're getting kicked off the plane because they're fighting, saying we need to get off the plane. And then Nick Murderboard uh, looks at his. Uh, Ticket and sees the year two thousand on it, um, and it's like what? In the year um, <laughs> sorry. And it's like, oh my god, he had the same vision I did. We're all gonna die. Or I would be like, why does my ticket say the year two thousand? <laughs> yeah. That's okay. just me. Um, well, yeah. Because it's not even is, like one. The thing is, like, he doesn't even. He just like he just kind of like. It's like, oh, it's probably fine. Well, wait, this would, because it came out in 2011, so probably the year would be 2010. So maybe it was just, he thought it was just a typo of the one number. You know, <laughs> just well, one number off. Well, 11 so <laughs> like a typo. Yeah. To, to, kind of, to kind of prove all this, I think the film was always set in the year 2000. Because this is a prequel to that first one. Uh, yeah, but yeah. the thing is, like, he sees the year two thousand, and he seems like, "Why does my ticket say this?" No, yeah, it, the, well, the same way he's what? like oh looking at. Oh my god, it. you're right. You're right because you know why? Um, Verizon guy's cell phone. Yeah, that does add up now. And I, we were, you know yeah, what? You're like, right. Oh, god, I feel like an idiot so now. shitty. <laughs> my, yeah, like is he like I a pot dealer dumber. on the side? I am because... dumber than Final Destination Five. No, that is. <laughs> please don't say that about yourself. Um, but uh, but you're no, good enough and, and you're you know smart what? Enough. When David Keckner drove up in that Beamer, I was like, why is he supposed to be the big bad boss in that old Beamer? <laughs> Yeah, true. Now it adds, yeah, it's all coming together. <laughs> yeah, and I was sort of thinking in the back of my mind about this because all throughout the film, there is zero references to any other of these sorts of events having happened before. So, like, after the first thing happened, it's like, well, what the hell is this? And, what was it? and, you know, the William Bloodworth guy doesn't mention that it's happened before. He just mentions that you know, death doesn't like to be cheated and so on and so forth. And no one says, oh, it's like that flight or, oh, it's like that car crash that happened on the freeway or anything like that. So as I was going to, I was like, wait a second, this clearly hasn't happened before, which must mean that this is the first time. And and then when I started thinking about it, I was like, oh, that's why they're able to make it after the final destination. That's (laughs) true. Yeah. So this is like a sequel prequel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a pre sequel. Oh, yeah, <laughs> uh, but you know what? But the thing is, they were really good with the wardrobe, though. Yeah, like not making it too obvious. Yeah, no, well, that was the thing. I when I thought back on it, as it was occurring to me, I was like, that there are no calendars anywhere. There are no super modern cars. It's just they just don't draw any attention to it whatsoever, and that. The best well, way to do okay, it. Okay, here's the one place where I call bullshit <laughs> is um, Nathan during the scene where he um, was like surveilling the the floor. Yeah. At, like that was like some post like that was like some 21st century technology. 
where he was like surveilling and zooming in on people. Oh, like, yeah, the- yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, it's definitely one of those things where they probably were just like, eh, fuck it, no one's gonna care. Like, like the thing is, like, I feel like they have committed. Like, I think you're right, but I think yeah. they have committed to it. Oh, and yeah. I do you think maybe that was like a po- like a reshoot or post editing choice because the way he looked at that like at the at the end the way he looked at that date was like it was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Why else bring the attention ticket. to like, it? He that looked way. At, yeah, he looked at that ticket. Like I know you're like like I know they wanted to pull attention to it, but they could be like he's just like placing it down. But it seemed like he was looking down at it and being like Wait, what? It was the same look he was giving, like during his like premonition, like, oh, to, no, like that all is his, the... that is his look. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just what's going on there? Yeah. Ooh, it seems windy. Ooh, what's going on over here? Yeah, well, so. maybe he's supposed to be the audience at that point, where they're like, "Oh shit, this is that flight." <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. Oh my god, yes, yes, yeah. I'll all buy right. that. <laughs> uh, now. Okay, I I guess probably the best thing to ask based on the series we're in, which of the deaths did you guys enjoy the most? <laughs> I a weird a sentence. A few of them. <laughs> um, I don't deal with stuff with eyes. Yeah, so let me see. I, you know what? I don't know that it was the best, but I was so happy to see Sprint Verizon Trader asshole get his comeuppance. <laughs> Although I did not enjoy them giving acupuncture a bad name because I have had it and it is very helpful and not at all painful. Uh, okay, well, right. yeah. All right. Well, if you were not <laughs> expecting it, maybe. Mm-hmm. Well, no, no. Actually, I called that. I said he's going to get death by acupuncture tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah. Said, and then I the said, Buddha, said, Buddha with the finishing like, move. When he yeah. walked into that spot, I was like, acupuncture needles will be involved somehow. Um, <laughs> and also, I used to be a competitive gymnast. So, you know, that was fun. <laughs> the, yeah. The, yeah. I definitely, uh, or not accurately called the gymnast, but I knew it, something awful uh, would happen with. Uh, <laughs> That old Rube Goldberg of death situation. Yeah. I think actually the most satisfying for me, it was like brief and wham bam, but uh, just seeing David Kegner finally get his was great. Yeah, oh. I, I had him down as one of my two favorites just because it was just simple, like, so done. It was just done, yeah. dead, dead. Like, wham. Nope. And like seeing a wrench like partially like decapitate somebody, like, mm-hmm. that's interesting. You know, this is kind of disappointing for me uh, for me because most of mine actually happened in the vision and the pre- like. Those were the oh, best creative were... deaths, yeah. and they like caught me off guard and just like the sailboat impalement and yeah, like the yeah, uh, the and truck the, falling in the rocks, and the just cable flying out through. that one guy. Like, yeah, uh, we just like we do bam. need to talk about the vision where they're driving across the bridge. <laughs> that was actually an impressive action sequence. It like. looked pretty yeah. damn good. It was yeah. Roland Emmerich. I, I almost. almost commented like, did was Roland Emmerich not available for this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was like it was like this guy is like trying to get an internship with Roland Emmerich. Um, <laughs> or maybe he was. I mean, he was done working with Cameron wanted to yeah, get Emmerich. Yeah, exactly. It's like uh, I'm not that hard to work with, guys. <laughs> yeah, and most of those were really good. Although I think my like my favorite. Death just visually is actually Sans at the end. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah, I thought that was really well done. (laughs) Yeah. And and then I I had down as the stupidest death was Olivia. Just could know. (laughs) <laughs> Olivia, Olivia was the laser eye person. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the one I was not in the room for because I can't deal with anything. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what, with eyes, what, I yeah. can't deal with any death. There was a literal eye roll. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, yeah, yeah, and then a yeah, figure just one. Yeah, I was like, yeah. nope, out. Uh, well, I, I gotta uh, leave. In that case, don't ever play Dead Space 2. Just don't play I that think, game. I think it's not a problem anyway, yeah. since I gave up yeah. on video games. Like, <laughs> so. Only going retro with games these days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. Like I, I, like I can't deal with any kind of like mutilation or violence. With, like uh, eyes and stuff. Yeah, and I don't appreciate it as someone that is in the opera industry. LASIK is getting a bad name <laughs> because yeah. that's not how LASIK works. And you're well, no, not but left you know, in a I room. I find out she got like a same day LASIK yeah. appointment. Exactly. That does not happen. Okay. That's, that's like that's like warning one, like red flag one. Yeah, you got, you 
like, we'll take you right back. Well, you can do any paperwork. Yeah. Well, it's, be fair. Yeah. Think about it. It was two thousand, so not quite as popular, yeah. maybe. Like, well, I mean, no, it's been I around like a long it would be time. More, but, yeah. it would be more medical clearance. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Like, it really well, was just. No, uh, we need to popular. laser someone's hey. eye here. Let's get her. Well, well, but hey, it was popular because you saw her toss her eyeglasses. Which what what the fuck? Like that's not a real <laughs> thing, is it? <laughs> We, we accept you know? donations. But, I know, but like, yeah. do you automatically, is that like a requirement to go into like LASIK surgery? You have to toss your eyeglasses? Like a 3D I mean, like, yeah, like, like a 3D you, glasses. You have your like Tom Ford frames, you're like, fuck them. Yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, okay, that's not, that's not a bad sign. Yeah, but at least they give you teddy bears to hold, which, you know, I will a nice say, touch. um, as far as death scenes go, um, when, um, murder board, I uh, went to work at his like you know dream like his passion job for chef after like the first time he went I was looking at all that equipment in the kitchen the way he saw it the second time he went in when he was starting to see all of it as a death threat that's how I saw it the first time he went to work I was like that could kill you that could kill you that could kill you well I yeah and as someone that's worked in plenty of kitchens I've seen someone really like, screw up their hand on a mandolin like, before I see like, no, I've injured myself in a deep fryer <laughs> if anybody ever has any kind of They're paranoia never let them watch this series no <laughs> never Absolutely. let Donald Trump watch this this franchise oh my god (laughs) (laughs) well he he probably just wouldn't get it oh okay i'd be smarter than that Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah and bleed faces is this this based on a true story (laughs) yeah yeah me and dad get along that's good ideas yeah Yeah. out of this (laughs) Yeah. Yes, he was the worst. Oh, oh my god! Like, and I, I and now, like, I think he was like the cell phone guy was based off of the Verizon guy. He looks <laughs> so much like him. Like, that's all I can call, think of him as was a uh, Verizon douche. Well, m- maybe. I mean, I, I don't I think, really know much well, about the. He really guy. went overboard with how reprehensible he is, though. Like, like he was like, and it, that's the thing. Like they said, he got everybody. Like I feel like he was calling like nine hundred numbers secretly, like trying to <laughs> make people. Like I think that would have been a more interesting thing if it like had been like revealed that like he was just calling. Like, 900 numbers if this really took back took place back in 2000 like the whole time he was just calling like 900 numbers trying to make it seem like he was a ladies man yeah <laughs> it's just like I mean, yeah God, this those like, 3 a.m commercial yeah yeah like, this is call like me. <laughs> uh-huh. I, I almost got an archer vibe from him as well like when he was talking to Sandra. yeah i hear i'm very i'm a very good listener and then he just holds up his finger and flips his phone up just like up oh. <laughs> Same way Archer would just down a bottle in front of someone. But, he, but it's like he thought he was Archer, but he's really H. John Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> God, <love you>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor H. John Benjamin. Oh, no, no. Well, he's not poor because God. Yes. No. And everything. <laughs> It just makes me think I need to get back into watching the Wet Hot American Summer of the early years over there. Oh, oh. You have to, yes, because it's, end of I'm summer, so we are getting excited. 10 years after. So yep. Excited. I'm so about that. <laughs> well, speak, actually, speaking of, you mentioned retro before, and it popped something in my head, and this will be the best place to do it since it's old things coming back. Have either of you seen the trailer for Jumanji? Mm-hmm. Yes. A I video game? It, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I mean, it, it looks like the actors are having fun, but really a video game? They, they couldn't just have the board come back? No, well, I, I think, well, it makes sense that, like, its iterations would come back in different forms, like, from generation to generation. I'm sure they'll make a sequel where it's an app. <laughs> well, they, I was... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm I just going to say that, I'm sorry, um, that maybe this is best left off, but I was think, considering maybe we should do Jumanji, but we can talk about that later, because okay. I know that's a soft place in your heart, or where your heart is. Yes, you know. yes, 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 right beside my heart, the little cabinet. <laughs> oh, God, I still, you know what? I can't tell you the last time I watched a Robin Williams movie. I, it's it's uh, so hard. I, I can I, tell you exactly yeah. the last time I saw a Robin Williams film. Is it good in Vietnam? Uh, it was not, no. It was actually Aladdin, because at, when I'm working in the 
the uh, classroom right. with the kids during the lunch period, it's normally on. So I have listened to Never Had a Friend Like Me pretty much every day. Oh, geez, you're just getting like <laughs> exposure therapy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that, like to numb you to the, like, the pain. Like I had, I had friends that I hadn't heard from in like a while when he died, like contacting me going like, I just, I, can we talk about this? Cause I know you'll like understand. Like <laughs> I had to like grief cancel. Like, and I was, I was a wreck. Yeah. Cause when I've I was cried little, less over relatives and I don't feel good about that by the way. But <laughs> yeah, before, before my mom married my stepdad, like I, like I, like I was like, Oh, I want to marry Robin Williams. Uh, cause I was a little kid and I didn't know about his demons. Um, he didn't care how but, hairy he was. <laughs> so I, I was a mess. Like I, I remember exactly where I was when it happened. Um, but, uh, I, um, like, and all these people were like, I just, like, I had to grief counsel a lot of my friends from his stuff. So. I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to see Dead Poets Society again. Like, oh I God. don't think I can ever touch that one. And, like, Boulevard, his last one, I don't think I could ever watch. Yeah, uh, I, I watched, uh, like, World's Angriest Man. Which what? is kind of uh, kind of a sad one to watch, actually, because it's about. That one? I, I don't know if you. Had, it's one of like the last four he made before he died, and he plays someone who is just like a total miser, like uh, hates everyone and everything, and he is told by his doctor that he has about forty-five minutes to live. Oh, and so, God. and so he goes, That's he like... goes off and stuff, and then like he. Yeah, he does die at the end, but like it's uh, it, it's not good. It's, I watched it after he died, so like, it was uh, it was so weird to see. Well, and what dreams may come was like disturbing back then. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the one. I saw that one in me. a theater. <laughs> I did not know what I was getting into. Oh, that was a I think Oof. a rental for me. Yeah, Oof. a video store rental. Oof. Yep. Uh, I have not yet seen that, and so oh, like I'm not going to. Oh, you never need to. <laughs> don't, ever, just ever, don't put yourself ever, through that. Ever. It's so <laughs> disturbing. It's a it, visually, it's a beautiful movie. Yeah, but. It is like one of the most disturbing movies ever. I I I I love that we've gone on to a Robin Williams tangent here. Um, I, my favorite film of his that uh, everyone else is just like, how the hell can you like that? Is actually One Hour Photo. I think he. Oh, thank God he didn't say that. Thank God he didn't. I, didn't <laughs> I, was, I was like, so. I'm like, he's like, gonna say that. I was like, I was like <laughs> not not I haven't seen that. So I can't so. Uh, uh-huh. I wanted that movie to be good, but yeah, One Hour Photo is incredible. Like, I. <laughs> I it 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 still hurt it the thing is you see his pain so it, like when he was in a dramatic role his pain was so real and obviously now we know it was very real yeah yeah it was one of the first times I saw him in a serious role with one hour photo so I think that's always going to be like a special place for me with his films <laughs> Well, and trying to steer us back on track just a little bit. So we just talked about serious roles. How about being the exact opposite? And let's talk about Tom Cruise Jr. here. Oh. Um, <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Miles Fisher. Yeah. Um, Miles Fisher is a guy that plays Peter. You see him in the film, to be perfectly honest, in my opinion, just kind of average, Not nothing too special in the acting department, really. No, I, uh, I didn't give him the right stuff to do. Because yeah. after seeing him in the other stuff... He has the ability to crush it. Yeah, and... he's uniquely talented. Yeah. Yes. And... He, he could have been, like, punnier. Yeah. Much, I, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know what? I would love to see him almost do an Austin Powers type thing. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. he could pull it off. Uh, and for those of you that have no idea what we're talking about with the other stuff, he is also a music artist and he has decided to uh, parody Saved by the Bell using the cast of this film where they all die in weird ways. <laughs> and it is And it was awesome. Um, it's amazing. It's the best. So good. It it's the actually the song. Best three and a half minutes song, of my life. The song <laughs> is actually good too. Um, yeah. And uh, he yeah. also did the, like for Superhero Movie, did a thing where he recreates the Tom Cruise Scientology video. And holy God. Oh my God. Is holy it incredible. God. Like, it's uncanny, it's perfect. Like, this guy has 
I mean, he's look, done his homework. Not just make, does he look like it, but we need he, to make Miles Fisher happen. Yeah, like, let's <laughs> get that Miles name Fisher. out there, people. Get him like a prestige like TV show or something. Like, let's make Miles Fisher happen. I am all on board for Miles Fisher. And I, you know, 1, the weird thing is, like, before, like, I was like, yeah, I, this guy is Tom Cruise. Um, but uh, when during the um, vision or like towards the beginning of the movie when he was running on the bridge i was like he's even doing the tom cruise run mm-hmm. like <laughs> his physicality everything oh the I'm mannerisms like, the laugh tom, Cru- did tom has cruise a- have some fun with somebody and yeah. something <laughs> happened <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but seriously guys nobody tell Tom Cruise about Miles Fisher because <laughs> I feel Miles Fisher will not be long for this world no he will have he will be marked for death like or no, no, no just like, like, no, like, just like some sort of like oh I, I think it'll be like a get out situation where like Tom Cruise will have his brain like implanted in a Miles Fisher so he can live be his a life yeah. through like the younger taller version of himself yeah, I, oh, um, awful. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm just gonna send you guys a pic. The picture of his from Wikipedia, and like, yeah, that's that's his Wikipedia page picture. I don't know if you can Damn, see that. Yeah, that's, 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 he's giving us Real. Christian Bale, and that's yeah, yeah. He, he and he's is, also made fun of Christian Bale. Yeah, with American Psycho, I know. Yeah. And he totally called, got a vibe. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. actually like. Uh, Brian said at one point in the movie he's going to go all American Psycho. Yeah. Yep, and then he goes and he to, to it in the uh, kitchen murder room. Yeah, yeah. Murder, yeah. Room. With- murder room. <laughs> and yeah, to, to, to think that number one, I will like put that picture out on our Twitter so if anyone wants to see that, they can. Number two, is it just me or does any chase in a kitchen just put you in mind of Jurassic Park at this point? Because when she was dodging mm-hmm. around behind all the things, I was only if they started like, hiding behind. There yeah. weren't enough <laughs> opportunities for like silhouettes and locked doors. Yeah, I could have so... used. Yeah, there weren't enough raptors. In the scene, so. Yeah, yeah, that that would have but... Im- improved this film considerably <laughs> if a raptor just turned up. Just like holy that, shit! That that would have been <laughs> death. Just see that coming. Yeah, <laughs> death that seriously really not playing cool. fair. Just a velociraptor turned up but, and eats them. And then the guy in the suit. Sorry, guys, wrong set. <laughs> 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 and it turns out to actually be like Will Forte in a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's actually oh. Tony Todd. Just go around the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I'm not saying it again. Okay. Like, <laughs> when is the Candyman, as now I'm saying it, yeah, when does that reset? Because you said it twice. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Like, the, like, the Grim Reaper in this is Candyman, basically. Like, and again, I want to hear more of like. And when um, Murderboard goes up to him and goes, why are you following us? He's like, I'm just doing my job. And he turns around and his jacket says, coroner. <laughs> and he goes, he was like, you were at the funeral, you were at the gym, and now you're here. That was after the acu- death by like acupuncture and Buddha. Um, but uh, the thing is, it doesn't explain why he was at the memorial service for the employees. No, That's yeah, your coroner job is done at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, unless he just wanders around looking for dead people. Is there anyone here? No? Okay. Just yeah, the, yeah, that's, the thing, yeah. that's, that's the thing. They aren't like, re, like at the memorial service, they are not recently dead. They are like yeah. dead. I mean, it it might have made more sense if there had been an ambulance in the back of shot, like he was actually there, like at a different scene, and he saw the memorial or something. But nope, he is literally just there to creep on these guys, which really makes me think he actually is dead. Well, yeah, death yeah, is his life. Like, like he's like inter- gets his jolly for death. Yeah. Like again, I want a spinoff about that character. <laughs> uh, there I... is one. It's called. It's called. Uh, Ah, uh, crap. Well, uh, dead, what was it? dead like me. Oh, uh, no, I was going to say, he's no Mandy Patinkin. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I used to love Dead, dead oh Like Me. Oh, my God. <laughs> dead Like Me was the best. Did you see that? You've never seen it, have you? I have uh, not. <laughs> uh, well, in that case, Colleen, so have you seen the film that they made to kind of mm-hmm, finish it all I up? I tried to, and it was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it just you know what that show actually deserves a revival and I think Mandy Batankin would like come back with that well I mean if they're following from the film then he wouldn't but yes if they were kind of just rebooting I it, think they it would pretend like the film didn't happen <laughs> 
I I genuinely enjoyed the ending of that film. I thought it was uh, a good. I see. I didn't fall point. with it. Like yeah. the first season of that show is damn near flawless. I mean, that, okay, I'm about to spoil the end of the film that came after the two seasons of Dead Like Me. So if you don't, if you don't want to hear the very end of that, don't listen for the next ten seconds. But the main character becomes the Mandy Potemkin role in that. Oh, George gets to be Mandy. Yeah. So, uh, and I, I won't go any more on that because in case someone just skipped ahead. <laughs> I to took happen. my earbud out. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, then I just... and then you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Not okay. that you care, since you didn't. All, I won't remember anything no, or any of the comments. Like, so. uh, like, but that show really, I think it was ahead of its time. Yeah. It was really. like the, it was like the, dawn, like it was during like, it was pre prestige television. Mm, yeah. And I, I feel like if it had been like maybe about three or four years later, it would have gone on like at least five or six seasons. Yes. Although I, I kind of subscribe to the, the Ricky Gervais slash uh, uh, John Cleese. <laughs> Yeah. method of don't make more than you need to i know but i feel like they didn't know i feel like it was like they had budget oh and they they could like have the gone on shoots. and done a lot more and it still would have been good but like where's the line when do you stop when making well, them? But I, I do feel like showtime mis- mismanaged that show because even season yeah. two is quite as good as season one no yeah <laughs> yeah i i think that uh when it came to that show it was definitely one of those cult things where it picked up a lot on DVD sales, and that's why they didn't. Well, actually, I had it on DVD. I had both seasons on DVD. So did I. That's how I I got into it because it was on in the UK. It was on Sky One, which was the TV channel that yeah. had like The Simpsons and mm-hmm. uh, Futurama, and then Dead Like Me, and or like it was basically just say we're buying everything we can from America and shoving it on one channel, and that's kind of what yeah, we got. And it was, but it's fantastic. It's a fan. Guys, check out Dead I'm, Like I'm Me. I'm still here, by the way. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Like, Sorry. I just, no, like, if you can get anything out of this podcast, check out Dead Like Me. Right. It's fantastic. Yes. But I got to get my recommendation in for my death show that was cut before its time was Pushing Daisies. Oh, I yeah. loved Pushing Daisies yeah. so much. <laughs> it was such a cool premise. I think I got it. Really check that out, people. It's so worth it if you yeah, haven't seen it. Well, not to spoil two the premise, seasons. but the whole premise gave me anxiety the entire show. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was so charming. And you have Chris and Chenoweth. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, it's, and it's Lee great. Pace. Who is yeah. Lee, Lee Pace is such an underrated actor. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. <laughs> See, so hey guys, that you're coming for a final destination, <laughs> and you're getting like anything and everything about dead people. But yeah, those <laughs> <laughs> rock I'm sorry. Yes. Um, now, what the the only other note that I wrote down about this film has genuinely nothing to do with anything we've just talked about, and it's just griping at the name of the restaurant that he worked at. What was that again? Le Café Miro 81. They put le at the beginning of it because, yeah, that's what French restaurants do. Exactly. If you go walk yeah. around France, there's le everything. No, you know, so, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> le baguette. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, what restaurant has a quote-unquote flagship in Paris? Yeah. Like, no, Paris restaurants are known for not having other outlets yeah they're not chains yeah and yeah it's not there's no cafe that i have ever been to in france and i have been around a fair amount of france with le in the title if Mm -hmm. it's a cafe it is called cafe followed by the name (laughs) that's how that works because cafe is the type of restaurant (laughs) like that Mm -hmm. yeah uh, other languages aren't hung up on as on articles as much as english so, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was like that, that would be yeah. like going to another country and it being the Burger King, then mm-hmm. just having <laughs> the in the title everywhere. It's like, no. Well, now, are we going to be like um, Pulp Fiction and talking about like <laughs> <laughs> La Royale with cheese? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 
It is the Big Mac. But anyway. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I know. I'm sorry. No, I love it because, you know, this movie is serviceable, but it's more fun to go off on these tangents. Well, this movie does give us a lot to talk about. But the thing is, like, when I was watching this movie, I'm like, I have a lot to talk about, but it doesn't necessarily have to do with this movie. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. And when I was watching this, I was thinking, this is nowhere near as fun as jason x like it it doesn't enter really? that level of campness i thought i mean there were definitely like obviously the deaths were and this again this is one of those weird sentences that you can only say in this specific context the deaths were interesting to watch but like some of them were just really out there for instance uh candy's that that just the human body doesn't do that. No, exactly. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you know what? Yes, a lot of gymnasts have broken their necks, but nobody's just like flat out, just like fell and like died and had their yeah. body crumbled into a heap. Yeah, and the, I, like the spine like came said, out. Like, I, like <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I said, like yeah, she had like multiple like. Like, bo- like skin piercing, like uh, <laughs> compound fractures. Like, I mean, the the human body doesn't just bend in half. Well, yeah. If you land on your neck, this is the yeah. horror world, though. Like where your neck, backs are made out like, of paper. Like your and, neck yeah, kind yeah. of like stops the rest of the body from bending in half. Like, yeah. I mean, if um, she'd have just snapped her neck and that was it, like that would have made more sense because of the she way she landed. Been, like, her body would have just like her legs made have like curled over and then just flopped back. Like, I'm sorry, like I was a gymnast. Like I spent like years and years being an avid watcher and fan of gymnastics. No. That's just not how it happened. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I I was sort of expecting when I could see exactly what was about to happen in the like second before they then just went with oh the human body is made of paper. I thought what would happen was her head would hit the mat and then her body would flip over her head, so mm-hmm. like, snap a neck that way. Like, but rather, <laughs> rather like, than there's what no they went reason for. her legs should have broken that way. No, in fact, her mm-hmm. legs. Did you actually watch it? Her leg didn't even really impact. No hit. No, like <laughs> it was like. They broke from flipping over her head. It's like it's like you know that gymnasts do that pose all the time without breaking anything. Yeah. And my my favorite part actually from it was the and it, it's kind of weird to fully explain why I find it so interesting because it's because of another video I watched a long time ago. But when she's there with her spine sticking through her back and like twitching and you hear in the background, somebody call an ambulance. <laughs> I know. Just wrong person. Yeah. Not wrong service there. You also hear like Candace? Like she's gonna answer. <laughs> Candace? You okay? Also, Can I get that, you some ice? That, that screw that was on the balance beam. Yeah. Would never nah. no. Those it's things vibrate no, those things yeah. vibrate and shake and that thing that thing would have come mm-hmm. off be- like well, it wouldn't have landed that way to begin. Before with. Candace was done with her routine, that would have come off. Yeah. And I'm sorry, like, and before, like, and that gymnast, that was on her. Because (laughs) you look over the balance beam and make sure everything's good to go before you start your routine. Yeah. Yeah, you'd you'd think that somebody would have noticed a a screw sticking up on the beam. Like, unless Unless Candyman was, like, distributing some sort of, like, you know, like, dumb gas through the air conditioner filter. Oh, you mean, uh, (laughs) you mean, like, Cabin in the Woods style? Yeah, 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 yeah. some mind control gas. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, no, yeah. I, uh, I, I have no idea if I'm going to leave this one in. But the reason that I found that so kind of funny that it was in there is there was a politician that uh, I, I think it was one of the first days of the year that I was born. There was a politician that went on live television to hold a news conference. And he handed out a, a bag to one of his aides. He handed a bag to another one of his aides. He reached into a brown bag and pulled out a gun and then promptly shot himself in the head. At which point he slumps into the floor. So whoever was in charge of the camera decided the best thing to do would be to very, very slowly zoom in on him. And you just hear them in the background. Someone is just yelling, like, somebody call an ambulance. It's like, he's got blood gushing out of his head. 
again, wrong service. But I, I yeah. don't know. Maybe people. Somebody call Candyman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody, somebody, come clean this up. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. You need the uh, yeah, the well, guys think, from John Wick. You need the dinner reservation. Well, guys. Like, like, people, like, you know, the human instinct is, I guess, like survival. So yeah, yeah. Like, I guess you're always just like hoping that like survival. Yeah, is I mean, still to get possible. too dark, but yeah, you have Jackie holding on Jack's skull. You know, yeah. like yeah. 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 you're really helping, but yeah. <laughs> And now I've made myself sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, yeah, I. This is not at all the way I thought this episode would end up. But uh, so it's always an adventure. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, did... but well, can I uh, just say I'm really surprised to hear you say that you liked Jason X better because. Jason X infuriated me. <laughs> so I think if you listen to that episode, yeah. Oh, yeah. How little res- respect they had for their audience. No, um, I, that's kind the, of why... They pulled. <laughs> that's, that's kind of why I enjoyed that more than this, because this one was... This one felt exactly like what it is we don't want to see, which is, hey, let's just make more of the same. That one was just like, yeah. oh, you know, he's fully unstoppable, he's got an upgrade, and he apparently has a sense of humor. And like that that was fun for me to watch rather than uh, this, yeah, which was uh, just okay, what's, what's the desk going to be this time? Because they're not all going to get out. And it was like, oh, okay, right, yeah, no, all right. <laughs> no, yeah. So, some of the deaths visually were all right, but were just, I think they were drawn out too much this time. Like, uh, way and all of the red herrings that they threw out there. As well, well, and also no, everything everything seems to involve like water near electrical lines or like bulky, yeah, that they lines, went to like, that. Fires. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you didn't know, don't miss like, water and electricity. Yeah, maybe that should have been like our first clue that this did not take place in 2011 or 2011 yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think part of this is they were trying to introduce this franchise to a new generation. Because this did take place 10 years after the original. So I think it was like, they, you know what? I think part of the fault is they shouldn't have called it Final Destination 5. They should have marketed it more as a reboot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, next gen or something. I don't know. Just Along, something else. Like, yeah, what? just something that um, reinvigorated. Well, I mean, I, can, I would have preferred that. However, if they did that, they then couldn't have had the ending that they did. Because that immediately ties it, it into would get the, the first twist. One. It was, yeah, yeah, it was like it, an it, M Night Shyamalan like mm-hmm. twist. Yeah, it's like this is what we've been planning all along. No, you just thought of this. No, <laughs> a couple like, weeks ago. So how can we make this interesting? <laughs> uh-huh. How can we? How can we like still maybe make money off this after we're done? Yeah, and it, and I was kind of surprised that this film is the highest rated. Out of all of the Final Destination films, yeah, on both was, Rotten Tomatoes it's certified and fresh. Metacritic, it's, yeah, it's certified fresh. 62% yeah, well, whereas the house has fifteen percent, which screw you, yeah, what the f? Because actually, that movie was very enjoyable. It's delightful. <laughs> <laughs> Go see the house. Go see Baby Driver. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I need to somehow get around to seeing that one. Oh yeah. my God, Paul, you're gonna love Baby Driver so damn I'm, much. I'm sure I am. Just, I mean, it's Edgar Wright. That it, it is a, <laughs> it is a like two sound, hour, like, intense music like... video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the like, second I like... saw, the, the second I saw the trailer for that, I was like, well, this film doesn't take itself too seriously. I'm in. <laughs> It, oh, it, but, oh, oh God, but it, it does in it terms does. of... Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure it does, but the premise. Precision, the yeah. precision and technical work, it like it, that was it is into that movie. going yeah. to get a lot of technical yeah. Oscars. Yeah, yeah, it, it, definitely it, picking up a lot of technical yeah. trophies. Yeah, it, it seems to me that, uh, I, that what Edgar Wright seemed to do is he takes something that, on paper, sounds a little weird. And then he just makes it right. <laughs> He's just ah, uh, right. Ah, uh, see, you there. yeah, clever. Yes, that was entirely planned. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's what this whole podcast was like for. So you just get, so you could do like an Edgar Wright pun. <laughs> yes, I have actually been very slowly, like Darren Brown s like making the conversation go this way so that I can hang out. That <laughs> Well, I'm glad I didn't get spaced out. <laughs> oh, yeah. mm. oh shit. Yeah. Don't get honor on us. 
Uh, yeah, please. There's no honor in imitating. <laughs> Sorry. What the hell has happened? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're going to have to just stop it here before we just go down even just more. Down, <laughs> like, until, until you sure you don't have anything else to say yeah, about until, Robin Williams? I, yeah. <laughs> or, like until it just goes down into an other, entirely other wormhole. Or... <laughs> you know what? Yeah, closing thoughts though. I kind of enjoyed this movie. I yeah, like <laughs> I, and for what it is, I kind of liked it. It kept my like. I, I was surprisingly engaged. I like. I'll be honest. I really was not looking forward to watching this, but um, it was it was entertaining. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I I would not say that it was a bad film. Maybe I mean maybe because I've seen more of them than you had. I was more burnt out on the idea. So like maybe mm-hmm. that helps. <laughs> just... As far as uh, sorry, go ahead, Paul. I was getting off. No, I, I was just going to say like may, maybe. Like, I don't know who's listening to this that hadn't seen it and will now want to see it. But if that's the case, like, maybe just see the first one and then this one. Yeah. It seemed to work okay for me. And me as well. Um, But, uh, like, I, it was surprisingly, like, okay. Um, And and it did, it did provide some great YouTube gems. Uh, Amazing YouTube gems. Yes. Yes. (laughs) So worth it. (laughs) And I would say, I don't know how you rank it, Paul, but I would say it might be my first or second favorite French ride we've done. As far as the film, not like, you know, not this recording. <laughs> right, I love the that, recordings, yeah. of course, but um, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would probably say second then, I think, yeah. Cause, uh, What's your Jason, favorite? Wait, Jason X. Do, Jason X, really. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Jason. At least you're consistent. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it, <laughs> it's, I think it is because of, as, as I said in that episode, like because of how meta it was, I enjoyed that. So like that, and not that I'm saying it's a good film because it isn't, but I, I enjoyed that aspect of it. So I, I, I think I, I have to go with Crystal Skull so far as my favorite. Oh. Yeah, I know it's awful, but I love it for its awfulness oh. because I mean, at least you get Harrison Ford <laughs> and uh, you know Karen <laughs> Allen, my eighties crush forever and always uh yeah so you got her in there and you got that great snakes scene but you know we're not we're not yeah picking out gems here we're just picking out the best of the worst here yeah yeah it is an awful movie but i did enjoy uh talking about that one yeah 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 i i do think i can come away from this watch and going like it, it's not terrible. It it definitely no Ernest in the Army or Police Academy Seven. Oh it's God. not that Ernest in the Army was utterly unwatchable. Oh my God! My mom actually like stood behind Jim Barney at a like a charity event once, and I was like, and then then she was like. I asked her later on. I was, she was like, "Yeah, he was just trying to be cute." And I was like, I "Asked her when I was older." I was like, "He had on you." She was like, "I don't know." <laughs> I was You're like, my okay, main man. So cool. You're my main Ernest man. Hit on my mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! All right. Uh, okay. Well, I think it's time to put a bit in this. Sorry, podcast. I think no. so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah. Other Ducks and Diamond story. <laughs> oh, teaser. Next time. Yeah, so, yeah that will, we will have to somehow figure out a way of getting that into the next one. So, all right. Well, thanks again for joining us, Colleen. It's always well, great having you yeah. on. No, uh, I'm, and I'm sorry I, I help I divert you guys on so many. I things. love that it's the uh, <laughs> but I, I appreciate uh, being welcome back every time. And again, I will be waiting for my five timers jacket. All mail. right. Well, yep. We got to finish. <laughs> up the design and it will uh yeah it'll hit yeah. uh thank you guys yeah. for putting up with me and thank the audience for putting yeah. up with me where can so, people uh find you Colleen? uh they can find me on twitter i am at uh Kel-t-o-l-e-a-n. it's uh k-e-l-t-o-l-e-a-n so um and i am also on the podcasts uh soiled restroom cinema and talk amongst ourselves if you like people talking about bad movies and SNL, you're going to love it. And even if you are lukewarm on it, you're still going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I would say, yeah, listening, if they're listening to this episode, they probably like listening to people talk about bad films. So I uh, That is a good point. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> fair, very fair. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I've already said where you can find us, so I'm not going to bother saying it again this time since it's long enough already. So I think we should just end by saying, I've been Paul. I've been Brian. And I am again Kelly. <laughs> All right. Bye, folks. All right. Bye bye.